10.5, we take a look at another application for volume, and that is with displacement and density. This is a topic that is often covered in your physical science class and units, but it's a good time to bring that in to our geometry work with volume here, because of course it involves volume. But the first vocabulary term that we just want to make sure we know is displacement. Displacement is the volume of liquid, sorry, volume of fluid or liquid, yes, uh, a submerged object pushes away. So the volume of fluid Now I am going to use the word liquid. Volume of liquid. A submerged object and we're just going to kind of use the term pushes away. Won't want to say displaces because then we're using the same term that we are defining. So the volume of liquid a submerged object pushes away. And then we use that to determine density. So density is mass per unit volume. How much mass it is compared to how much volume it has. And there's the formula that you probably know, and that is density is equal to mass divided by volume. Sometimes we use a little triangle picture to show that relationship, and I'm just going to put density equals mass divided by volume. Example A, Mary Jo wants to find the volume of an irregularly shaped rock. She puts some water into a regular rectangular prism with a base that measures 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. When the rock is put into the container, Mary Jo notices that the water level rises 2 centimeters because the rock displaces its volume of water find the volume of the rock. All right, this is something that many of us have experienced many times in our lives. If you ever uh, are going into a bathtub or even a swimming pool, you are displacing some liquid, and therefore the water level rises in the pool or the bathtub, the amount of your volume. And so you can see the rock right here, which is irregularly shaped. You can't just calculate the volume of this rock very easily by measuring its sides because it has irregular shapes like most rocks do. And so we have to get a little bit creative to figure out the volume. So we notice that when we put the rock into the container, the rock, and the water level rises right here, it rises two centimeters. All right, so what we're really interested in is this little slice right here, this slice of liquid that the rock is displacing. Not necessarily the whole containers volume, but just that volume that is being displaced. So that little volume right there has units that would still be the 10 centimeters and the 15 centimeters, but now its height right here is the 2. So we basically have a little prism of water that's 10 by 15 by 2. And so the volume of that rock is going to be found by this little slice of water prism that we have, which is the area of the base times the height. So that would be 10 by 15. And the water level rise is 2. So that's the height of this little slice of the prism right here. And so 10 by 15 by 2 would be 300 cubed centimeters. All right. So that is the volume of the rock. Well, that's a nice little easy calculation that we can make without actually having to measure around the rock. We just measure the amount of water that is displaced in a rectangular prism container. So that's nice and easy. Example B. A clump of metal weighing 351.4 grams is dropped into a cylindrical container causing the water level to rise 1.1 centimeters. The radius of the base of the container is 3 centimeters. What is the density of the metal? Given the table and assuming the metal is pure, what is the metal? Now this problem reminds me, and it might remind some of you guys, of the famous problem with Archimedes, the mathematician Archimedes, and the gold crown, where he was trying to figure out if the crown 
was made of pure gold because the goldsmith was trying to cheat the king, and the king was clever and hired Archimedes and figured out that the crown actually was not pure gold and that the goldsmith must have taken some and uh, kept, for, kept some for himself. And we'll see actually a little video in class related to Archimedes and the gold crown. All right. So we've got the densities here, and we've got to remember density. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So we've got those density numbers that we're going to figure out. And what we have here is we have a mass that's given back up in the problem. We're told that the mass is 351.4 grams. But we don't know what the volume of that clump of metal is. And to get the density, we need mass and we need volume. So let's take a look at our displacement idea and see if we can figure out what the volume is. It says it's dropped into a cylindrical container and the water level rises 1.1 centimeters. So let's just draw a little cylindrical container here as best we can. All right. So here's our cylindrical container. And let's say here's the water level right here. And we know this water level is going to go up right here. It's going to go up, it says, 1.1 centimeters. So this water level right here, here's the water. That water is on the rise 1.1 centimeters because at the bottom of the container is the rock that we put in there. So that rock goes in there, the water level goes up 1.1 centimeters. So what we really want is this 1.1 centimeters here, this, this amount that the water level rises is really what we're interested in. So I can almost maybe even sketch that off on the side here and say, all right, so here's my little slice of my cylindrical container here. And I know the height of it is 1.1 centimeters. And it says that the radius of the base of the container is 3 centimeters. So let's plug that in here. We've got this radius of our base is 3 centimeters. All right, with that information, I should be able to determine now my volume of this little slice of the cylinder, which really is just a, a water level that is rising 1.1 centimeters. So volume of any cylinder is the area of the base times the height. And in this case, I've got the area of the base is a circle. So pi times 3 squared is the area of my base, and my height is 1.1 centimeters. All right, so if I multiply, that's 9 pi times 1.1. So basically, that's 9.9 .9 pi. And that is approximately equal to 31.102 cubed centimeters. All right, fantastic. Now I have the volume of the rock, much like the one on the last problem. So now I can go over to my density formula, and I should be able to calculate the density. So density is mass divided by volume. Again, my mass was given in the problem as 351.4 grams. And now I know my volume is 31.102 cubed centimeters. So if I divide those two, notice that I can divide the numbers, which ends up being about 11.3. And remember, I also divide the units. Now, the units don't cancel out here. Grams divided by centimeters. This is a 3, by the way. 11.3. But grams divided by centimeters, we just keep as grams per cubic centimeter. And that's what a density is going to be. It's going to be a unit of mass per unit volume. So grams per cubic centimeter is a very common density unit. So let's look back at our chart here and see which of these metals up here have a density of 11.3? And maybe you already noticed it. But over here, on the left side, we have lead. And lead has a density of 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter. So this density matches up with lead. So lead must have been the clump of metal that we dropped into the container with a density of 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter.